before it's too late. Mystical Lee Mahuli Garden was the dream of Chipper Whitman's late grandmother. She wanted to preserve this thousand acre valley as a living classroom for future generations, but her vision is under threat from introduced species. When we first started working with this genus about uh, 25 years ago, there were 60 left growing on the Nepali coast. Today there's less than 10. And one of the problems with this plant is it's adapted to a pollinator, which is a moth with a very long tongue. And that moth seems to be, in its larval form, host specific on another native plant which has gone extinct. So as the, that plant went extinct, the pollinator went extinct, and now this plant is completely dependent upon us. It normally grows on extreme sea cliffs, so we've had to literally rappel down the cliffs to hand pollinate with a little paintbrush these blossoms and then come back a month later to collect the seeds. So this plant here was grown from seeds collected on the Nepali close coast after rappelling down. And uh, we've got, now got about 300 of these growing in our, in our garden here. And so we're protecting it here, but ultimately we need to take it back to being able to live on the Nepali coast, which is not possible at this point because of all the goats down there that, that uh, eat these. To the goat, this looks like a cabbage on the end of a baseball bat, and it uh, looks pretty appetizing. So the goats really um, have nearly driven this plant into extinction. Nearly 300 Hawaiian plant species are now listed as threatened or endangered. 100 have fewer than 20 individuals surviving in the wild. It's a pretty sad day when you watch these things, the last known one in the wild go, goes extinct. It's um, like losing a friend, part of your family. Stopping alien plants and animals will help many of Hawaii's endangered species, including the nene goose. In the 1950s, the nene population was down to just 11 birds. Hunting had nearly wiped them out. Now, thanks to protection and captive breeding, numbers have climbed to around 1,300. But that's not enough. Hawaii's state bird is still the sixth most endangered waterfowl species in the world. Today, introduced predators like the mongoose and the cat prey on these birds, tearing their victims apart. We've seen birds mourn the loss of a mate for up to a week. It's generally standing in the same position, or the same location with the carcass, and kind of wailing and moaning this pretty heart-wrenching call. Uh, and yeah, get, we've seen it go on for up to a week. Biological technician Kathleen Sherry believes one way to help save wild flocks will be better predator control. It's early morning and teams of men and dogs venture into the island's wilderness to eradicate what is arguably Hawaii's worst feral pest, the pig. These hunters are part of the National Park Service pig control program and Kiola Medeiros is the hunt leader. We just gonna walk along this spent and then we're gonna cut in. This is prime pig country, an ancient jungle of native Hawaiian ferns called hapu. Here, the pigs are on a mission to destroy, tearing at the ferns and creating wallows that become breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Today, the dogs have quickly picked up a pig scent. Yeah, the dogs got one right now. Just grabbing them. Within minutes, the dogs have their prey surrounded. You see this dog, she doesn't want to leave the pig. While the eradication program is controversial, there is a strong argument that by stopping the destructive pigs and therefore limiting the marshy mosquito breeding grounds, some of Hawaii's endangered species will have a better chance of survival.
Made up of 132 islands and atolls, spread over 1,500 miles, Hawaii is home to around one-third of all of the United States' endangered flora and fauna. It's not surprising, then, that the Aloha State has earned itself the unenviable title of endangered species capital of the world. I'm afraid there won't be anything for our children later. And I'm 43 years old and teaching all my students about the significance of their culture and how rich their heritage is. And it saddens me, but we're not gonna give up. My mother's 80 years old and told us that we cannot give up until we die. So it's not too late to save Hawaii. Hope lies with the island's children, the leaders of the future. I have faith, not in our generation, we're old, but I have faith in the youth. I think the young people are the ones that's gonna to help to bring back everything, to ecologically balance our earth. The next generation of kids, we're teaching them to be reef keepers and protectors of the ocean. And when they finish high school, when they finish school, they have that conscious level of thinking that conservation is a way of life. Remember the turtles, tangled in discarded fishing nets, their flippers amputated. These ancient mariners learned to adjust and balance when they returned to the sea. Like these turtles, Hawaii can survive and recover. It has a second chance. We need to put a lot more effort into restoration projects around the state. We really have to begin taking degraded areas and restoring them so that we have places to outplant these rare and endangered plants. We've lost the Caribbean monk seal in the last 50 years. The population of the Mediterranean monk seal is down to just a few hundred animals. And the Hawaiian monk seal is one of the last places where we actually have a chance to save this species that's been on our planet for 15 million years. The goal would be to see increased number of nests every year, to see the hatchlings that we release today, to someday, to 25 years from now perhaps, come back here if we can, if I'm still can come back here and see that hatchling come back as an adult to lay eggs. I think that's the ultimate success story. For the groups who face constant setbacks, a fight for funds, and a battle for resources, that kind of success might seem a long way off. But with everyone working towards the same goal, the endangered plants and animals in one of the most beautiful places on Earth can be saved. Hawaii can turn from paradise lost to paradise regained because of the people who are already acting before it's too late.